Good morning. Well, afternoon now. Yeah, I don't know what happened. Uh, um, you don't know what happened with what? Touch something and then hold over. So I have to go back again. Go back. Again. Well. Can you not see me or hear me? I can hear you, but I don't see you. Oh, well, you don't? No, because I don't know what I did. I touched something. <laughs> okay, I'll go back and do that again. Hmm. Okay. Nine six seven. Nine six seven. Zero two seven. Zero two seven. Three five nine. Three five nine. Three, five, nine, three, five, nine, nine four. Nine four. And you're you're certainly connected. You're the only one. Now I, I can see you now. Oh, okay. Okay, good. So how was lunch? Oh, lunch was good. Uh, was uh, barbecue chicken, and this barbecue has a good, had a good flavor. Okay, good. It was kind of sweet, and that was nice. There was not that many people there. Mm -hmm. Any of the normal, I don't see them. Maybe they are on vacation. I don't know. Hmm. And I saw Barbara. I was talking to Barbara, the one. Barbara, the one who come to the drawing classes. Right. On yeah, Friday. Barbara Baker. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, we got two Barbers actually. We got in that drawing class. We got Barbara Baker and yeah. Barbara Green. Yeah, the other Barbara. One is younger than the other one, but I can't mm -hmm. say that in class. So. <laughs> yeah yeah i think barbara baker is maybe a little bit younger than barbara mm -hmm. yeah i don't i don't know that if there's a huge difference but you know mm -hmm. so. hmm. and barbara I talk like a real southern very slow yeah yeah well she uh well, yeah, I think she's from the South. Hmm. Well, I'm just looking to see if anybody has sent me a text or anything. I sent one. I don't know if you got it. You don't get it. I'll send it again. Well, I got your email. Oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah, I'm, I'm just wondering if anybody's trying to get a hold of me because it's after time. Nobody's here. And well, I wouldn't say nobody. Well, I mean, the rest of the people, only me yeah. and you. Right, so far it's you and me. In which case, <laughs> I don't know, we'll have, to, we'll have to break out the tequila or something, you know? So, yeah, I don't see anything. Hmm. Okay, and it's already 2.03. That's odd. Hmm. So Bob, John, Veronica, yeah. <clears throat> Claudia, yeah. Wanda have been gone again. Uh, Who's been gone? A Wanda. Wanda hasn't been back for a while. Mm -hmm. You know, ever since we had that little kind of back and forth. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Betty Bates and Wanda kind of left the group. So, I saw in the grocery store, I saw Maury last night. You saw who? Maury from the old group. Hmm. Trying to think of who that is. You don't remember Maury? Maury, Maury. Ellis, and. Huh? Oh, Mo yeah, Mo uh, I think it's Maury, his name, Maury, oh, Maury. Hmm. Okay. Hmm. Well. Yeah, I'm not seeing where anybody's, I'm not getting any notifications about anybody joining up. So it's, I guess it's you and me. 
<laughs> until they so, show up. Rebecca Pickney or Pickney. Rebecca, yeah. Yeah, she, well, I talked to her this morning. Her and June, you know, both said that they would be here. So. Oh. Well, that's okay. You know. We'll right. wait. No, we can move forward. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You got to learn, you know, in life. It, it doesn't pay necessarily to wait for people. Uh, you know, you got to kind of move forward. You know, they're going to they're gonna do what they're going to do. At any rate, so guess, guess whose drawings we're going to talk about? <laughs> the only one here. <laughs> yeah, we're going to talk about your drawings. Okay. Um, so in looking at these Armando, okay, some things are changing. That's good. You're making, uh, you know, you're making some changes. You're experimenting, playing with using like the side of the pencil and softening things. Uh, you know, you didn't do that a lot early on. Mm -hmm. So, so this is good. Your proportions are getting better. You know, they're not dead on yet, but you know, you seem to be more aware of them and, uh, and they are improving. Um, you know, in the, the figure here, okay, again, you know, you got some softer elements in there, you know, more defined lines. So there's a good deal of contrast in there. You know, the same thing with the value. You know, you got a range of values in there. Now, that's not saying that you can't go further and you can't get softer and you know, more round in feeling, but you know, you're headed the right direction. That's good. Well, same here. So, you know, right, right now, you know, I guess if I were to try to suggest one thing you need to focus on more than anything else, is when you turn the pencil to the side and lay it down to lay in a tone, be a, you know, be a little more patient, you know, about it. Build it up maybe a little more slowly. Um, and you'll, you'll find that you can vary your range of value that way. And you can also make like subtle changes have some areas darker and then transition to something that's mid-tone or light. So it's not all kind of just one flat value. Because when, when you're working on a human figure, being that it's a, a round form, you know, the value is not going to be flat. It's, it's going to have some variation in it. You know, it might be darker at the top, lighter at the bottom, or you know, from the right side to the left side, it might change value a little bit. And, you know, look for those subtleties and try to begin to control, you know, the, the pencil and build that up. Uh, so again, you know, when you see it, you know, you're able to capture that a bit better. Now, when I'm looking at uh, <clears throat> your two faces that you drew, okay. Um, they kind of remind me of uh, Egon Schiele. Egon Schiele. Oh. Right, we looked at his work before, you know. He was an uh, artist in Austria back around, really right around the very beginning, like around 1900. You know, like maybe to like 1915 or something like that. Um, but like this particular drawing, you know, it is strongly reminiscent of of his drawing as well. 
Um, and he wouldn't be a bad person for you to look at as far as trying to pick up ideas about how to use line and to, you know, if you, if you want to stylize your work, um, you know, he'd be a good person to look at. Kim and Klimt uh, would both be good. So, but there, there's a lot of artists out there. That, I'm sorry, you could look at and, you know, pick up, you know, some ideas as to how, how you want it to handle um, things like line and tone and, and things like that. So, now this is your other drawing. And um, again, you know, your drawings are coming along, you know, they're beginning to feel a little more solid. You know, you, you've got a nice variety of, you know, more solid areas and more tonal areas that are a little bit softer and then, you know, very defined line work. So, so that's good. Yeah. You're getting some good variety in there. Thanks. Yeah. So, you know. See? It's all getting better. You know, and your yeah. figures are beginning to look more like, you know, human figures. So, yeah. Good job. Thanks. All right. We got... Uh, now the the late one of the ladies you were talking about, right? Barbara Green. Her daughter sent these in. And so she was sitting there in class, you know, drawing, you know, basically the same thing as you were. Um, actually I think this week you weren't there. Like two weeks ago. Hey Veronica, how you doing? Hello, how are you? I'm good. And June. Hi. So, uh, so anyway, these are Barbara's drawing. And, um, you know, as you can see, I mean, she's getting the idea of the figure on the page, you know, but she's kind of, she's not that comfortable in laying in kind of like a soft value. Some of her stuff looks, you know, a little bit scratchy right now. So, you know, we'll work with that and we'll try to, Try to get it where she has a little more variety uh, in things, but uh, you know, still, I don't, you know, I don't think she's drawn the figure a lot, you know. But like this drawing in particular, I think this is one of her her better drawings. I love the face. Yes. Well, there's something about yeah, it's the mood. It's got this softness to it. It's uh, really kind of nice. So. There's the standing figure, and then that seated figure again. So, you know, she's still struggling with proportions, you know, trying to get the relationship of the head, the shoulders, the hips, you know, all of that, you know, sort of worked out. So, but little by little, you know, she's, you know, she's making progress. Uh, we're gonna skip this guy for now. And John's not here, but June is. Talk to me, June. Hi. Okay. <laughs> All right. So I guess I guess you're being incognito today. You're just gonna, you know, be your name. Um. Anyway, these are your one-minute drawings from Friday. Yes. Yeah. Okay. You know, and look, you know, you're for a minute. You know, you're beginning to get the overall proportion, you know, height, width, you know, um, and generally kind of the weight and the movement of the figure. Uh, the only thing I would say to you, you know, it, it's like in some places, you know, the line looks like it's fairly direct and kind of confident. Other places, you're not so sure. Um, Uh, now this this is a little bit better page, a little more fluid, right? Uh -huh. So you're loosening up a little bit. 
Uh, these were, I think the one was a longer drawing, the one over to the right. And that was probably a minute drawing over to the left. But, uh, okay. So here you're beginning to kind of incorporate value and some softness and some tone in it. And, uh, you know, it's beginning to work, you know, in places. You're still, you're, you're still kind of, when you're given enough time, you, you tend to overwork things. Like you probably <laughs> laid this line in here, right? And then you probably laid this one in and then you went back and, you know, went over this one. And I know why you did it because you wanted to, you know, increase the weight out here. Uh -huh. So it would be different. Um, and that's probably where, you know, you probably, instead of drawing back over it again, you could have taken your kneaded eraser and just, uh, you know, like run, run your kneaded eraser along this line and made uh -huh. it better because the light was probably actually hitting this side. And then, oh, this yeah. the, you know, that this one is dark enough. And if this were lighter down to the elbow and then uh -huh. under here, you, you did what you did. See, then you've got three different line weights. You know, you've got the inside, which is, you know, really falling into some kind of tone or shadow. You've got the forearm, which is really catching a lot of light. And then you've got the underside of the arm, which is really kind of falling into a deeper shadow that's connected to the rest of this. And see, so you can get more variety out of that. Okay. Okay. And that eraser, that eraser is, is just as an important tool as your pencil or your chalk or anything else. So, you know, by sometimes it's not a matter of reinforcing or restating the line. Sometimes it's a matter of taking it back because it might be too strong, right? Okay. Um, this is your longer drawing. Okay. And, you know, again, you know, you're getting, you're beginning to get a sense of the movement through here. Um, when you're laying down values and tone, try, try not to do this too much, right here, where it's all moving like one direction. <laughs> and, you know, un unless you're trying to tell somebody that this is like a woven sort of like, you know, basket or, you know, some kind of like woven grass or something um, on the edge of the chair yeah because i mean it becomes really distracting when you when you see this versus you know like some of the softer areas in here uh -huh. it, it becomes very strong right you want to go look at it and that's not really what's where you want to look really where you want to go is you know kind of up here right and if you cover that up with your finger, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. All the rest of the drawing, you know, kind of comes together and looks better without it. Okay? Okay. All right. So think about, you know, think about where you want to put, you know, particularly any kind of strong texture. Okay? Because it, okay. it will, yeah, it will take over very quickly. Okay, so here we have, you know, one of, it looks like maybe one of your uh, 10 minute figures right here on this one, okay? And again, you've got kind of a really nice kind of movement, you know, through the figure here. Um, you know, again, you kind of come back in, you begin to build up some value or some tone, and then you decided to put in the darker value behind it yeah. And, you know, it's not a bad idea to do that, but it's how you do it. And you, you have to, you need to start thinking more about taking your, your paper. And since you're right-handed, 
all right? You yeah. Know, you don't always have to shade at a 45 degree angle, all right? You can actually, even if you took your paper and you just, you know, rotated it slightly to change the angle of it, see? To break that up so that it's not all running, you know, the same angle as you're shading on the figure. To get more variety in there. Could help, okay? You know, or making that more solid and, and or taking and, oh. and rubbing it back or blending it or something. So again, you know, it's, it doesn't become distracting from the drawing. Okay. 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 Thank you. Yeah. And you could say kind of the same thing here. Right. Uh -huh. <laughs> so so I, what I want you to work on, mm -hmm. you know, while you're drawing during the week is, is work on putting down like gradations, you know, from dark to light tones, right? And making okay. it soft, right? Uh -huh. So a good exercise to practice that with would be take an egg out of the refrigerator and set it on your table and try to draw the egg with all the light and the shadows on it, okay? Okay. Yeah, because practice, it, right? Okay, right. that way. Yeah. Yeah. Because you see, it's the same problems that you're going to have when you're drawing a face or you're drawing an arm. You know, they're very mm -hmm. similar forms. And the light and the shadow mm -hmm. is going to work pretty much so the same way. Okay? Okay. All right. Let's see. And you got one more down here. Yeah, these are yeah some of your one minute yeah sketches, right? Okay, and again, okay. You know, yeah, your proportions, your movement, stuff like that. Most of that's working pretty well. Okay, so not bad. Yeah. Okay. All right. Let's see. Did uh, all right. So Susan is here. Veronica is here. So let's go down to the bottom over here. All right, so we'll start with Susan. All right, so Susan, these are, you know, your one minute drawings, I'm guessing, okay? Yeah. yeah. All right. <laughs> yeah. Now, and we've kind of talked about this a little bit before. I know that one minute is really fast, okay? <laughs> but, you know, the fact is you're still trying to draw them kind of like a, what I call a coat hanger, right? You know? I just didn't have time to do anything else. I, I know. <laughs> I was just trying to get them on the paper. That was, uh, right. that was my primary goal. <laughs> okay. uh, so, so I want you to change your primary goal, okay? It's not about how much you draw. It's about being conscious or aware of what you're drawing is like, did it represent the thing I was seeing, right? So if it were, you know, like an edge of the figure that were in light, well, maybe the line is very light, right? Like up here at the shoulder, how this almost disappears. See, that's kind of interesting. See, it goes from that into a more solid line, right? Right, right. Yeah, so it's it's more about looking at something, recognizing what kind of line you want to make to describe it, okay? And, you know, I don't care if you get the whole figure on there. You know, I would rather see you get from the top of the figure down to the foot and vary the line and have more of a sense about, you know, where the lights, you know, and the, the shadows were, than, you know, getting the whole, you know, both legs and both arms and a head on, okay? Okay. Yeah, so I yeah. want you to particularly focus about, you know, how I'm gonna vary the line. Now, here's the thing. 
chances are that you're not going to do a lot of complete drawing. You know, when you when you come to doing gestures and stuff like that, really, till you get about to about a, at least a ten or a fifteen minute drawing, you're not going to have enough time to maybe do a complete drawing and get the whole figure on it, and that's okay, right? Because the goal isn't necessarily to get the whole figure on there. It's at, not for you, okay? It's about how do I use the tool to say what I want to say with it, okay? And that's what okay. I want to focus on. Um, okay. Yeah. And, you know, kind of the same thing here, right? Now, along, you know, and I'm, I'm not picking on, you know, your one-minute drawings, you know? But what I, I would say is that, okay, you're beginning to get better proportions, okay? And you're beginning to see your proportions better than, um, you know, than you were earlier on. And even though these are a minute, okay, you got quite a bit done. And, you know, you pretty much have the whole figure on the page and it's moving. Okay. Now, when you get to your longer drawings, your 10 minute drawings, all right, so you're beginning to incorporate tone. And you can see really clearly on these drawings in particular that you're aware of the fact that, you know, you need to make different lines and different line quality and weight and stuff like that because you've done that, you know, in both of these drawings, right? And then you, you've begun to lay in some tones and values and you actually did it really softly, you know? And you got a little variation in value and stuff. So again, you know, given enough time, you can do these things, okay? It's just that you have to practice it, even with the short thing, and not worry so much about, you know, I gotta get it all done, okay? Okay. All right. But you know, like both of these drawings are really lovely little drawings. You know, just on their own. Thank you. Thank you. Um, you know, when you get to her head. Okay, let me back up just a little bit. I need to go the other way. There we go. Yeah, like on on her hair, head, and her hair, and stuff like that. Okay, you got a pretty good representation of who you were drawing. You know, I mean, it looks a lot like the model. Right. And again, you've got some nice, you know, variety in the way you've used the pencil and the line to lay down tone and texture and the hair, things like that. So again, you know, you can, you know, you can certainly do that. Right. And, and you're aware of it and that's good. You know? So just keep practicing. Okay. Um, yeah. About the only thing I'd say, and, and it may be, it may be the uh, the light that you're shooting the the drawings in, um, or it may be your phone or something like that. But yeah, it's um, you know the contrast. You know, it's darker. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. You could. Yeah, you could. Yeah. And again, I it's think it's not that dark on the page. It's it's a white. It's a white page. I don't know. It's mm -hmm. just coming out. It yeah. looks brown, beige, or something. But. Right. Yeah. Well, that's probably because did you shoot it indoors? Yeah. Well, I'm I'm not going outdoors yet because I haven't been able to clean off my uh, porch yet from the pollen. So I don't okay. want to step in it and then bring it back in the house. So um, mm -hmm. I just haven't been on my porch. Yeah. But um, yeah, it, it's indoors. Yeah. So, well, um, shooting, you know, taking photos of you know, any, any of your drawings or anything inside, the paper is going to uh -huh. turn kind of beigey or orange. And that's because of the indoor light. Because you have what we call incandescent lights in your house. And, and that's what they, you know, the way the camera sees them is it kind of shifts it to the red side. Okay. Um, I haven't been able to clean off the porch. Um, yeah. I, I was in a car accident. Them, so I'm recovering from that. You yeah. know, I can't bring the hose up. So it's just been, <laughs> it's just yeah. been a couple of weeks. But uh, so, yeah. um, uh, and that's fine. Okay. 
yeah, I just want you to, you know, try to get you to be aware now. You know, when you take pictures like this indoors, one of the things you can do on your phone, and I don't know if you've played with this, but you can actually edit the photos and you can adjust the contrast on them. You know, and okay. maybe. Okay. I've, never, I've never tried that. <laughs> yeah. I guess I. Uh, okay. Yeah. Um, yeah, that's that's one of the wonders of cell phones and things these days is that they have their own little, you know, in your photo app, you can actually uh -huh. play with the contrast and the color temperature and all kinds of things, depending on the type yeah. of thing that you have. So, okay. But that would, okay. Be, that would be one way to sort of compensate for it a little bit. Okay. Now, this is your okay. other long drawing. And, yes. they, you know. You did a pretty nice job on this, um, as far as you know, getting some variety, as far as the the range of value, the types of lines that you're using, uh, laying down some values and tones, and keeping it fairly soft. You know, all of that's Thank you. working pretty well. Okay. Okay. All right. That much. <laughs> okay. Um, okay. So then we come to Veronica, okay, and so, uh, you know, these are your one minute, okay, and what you basically did, Veronica, is you made like a wire frame, okay, or some people would call it a stick figure, right? Yeah. Yeah, and guess what? Okay, okay, that ain't such a bad thing, because in fact, you know, uh, you know, when I start to do a figure drawing, you know, I don't necessarily put down like a line for each of the arms and things, but I'll, I'll use sort of almost like a stick figure approach to find that line of movement or the gesture, right? Right. You know, so like that center line here, okay? But the one thing that I know about the human figure is that you are, and you know, listen carefully, you are never, ever going to have a line that runs straight up and down the torso. Okay? Ever. Yeah. Because it curves, the body curves. It does, you know, even when it's trying not to, it, yeah. can't, it can't help it, <laughs> you know? <laughs> Because, you know, all you have to do is just move one thing and then the body has to shift something else to help balance it. Yeah. You know, and that's just kind of the way it works. So, so even when you're, even when you're laying down that gestural line. Right. Yeah. Try, yeah. Just, you know, get some kind of movement in it because it's the human body, you know, that's what human bodies do. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I mean, you know, even those guys standing outside of Buckingham Palace, you know, yeah. all the time. Yeah, you really can't use a straight up and down line for them either. <laughs> but, but it's pretty close. Okay. okay. It's pretty close, you know. So, yeah, just keep that in mind, okay? Okay. All right. Um, and here, you know, you seem to be loosening up a little bit, you know. And get beginning to get a little bit of width and volume and stuff in the uh, yeah, I got an itchy spot right in my corner of my eye here. All right, there we go. Now I can go back to seeing again. That's good. Yeah, yeah. Um, you know, but like I was saying, you're beginning to get some volume and some movement in there, and that's good. Um, and I know, you know, one minute is not a lot of time, you know, but you'd be surprised really, you know, if, if you practice this, how fast you can get a figure down in a minute. You yeah, know, it's been a while. It's been a while. Yeah. Yeah. It takes practice. Yeah. And I know, you know, we, we do a little bit of that, but, you know, we usually don't don't do gestures that quick. <laughs> right. Try to give you guys a little bit more time. So. 
<clears throat> Pardon me. So these, are, these, I think, are the 10-minute drawings. Is that correct? I think so. I should have labeled it better. <laughs> <clears throat> mm, pardon me. All right. So let's start talking about, okay, these are, are getting to the point where, <coughs> hang on one sec. I gotta, okay. I got to get a drink of water. <laughs> Mm. So I have a gremlin in my throat. <clears> throat> All right. So these are getting to the point now <coughs> still, okay. where you could vary your line. Okay. Yeah. And here, again, and, and this is the same thing I told Susan, you know, I want you to slow down. Okay. Okay. And I want, I want you to spend some time thinking about, okay, I've got an arm. It has the line on the left, the line on the right. What are they doing? You know? and, and how do I say that one is in light and one is in shadow? And the only way that you can do that is that you've got to vary the line, right? Right. And so I want you to spend a little more time doing that and don't worry about completing the whole drawing. Um, so that you can begin to look at it and, again, make a decision. All right, okay, I see this is in light. What kind of line am I going to make to tell whoever's viewing this drawing later on that that's what I saw? And then the, the other side was in some kind of tone or shadow? Right. Okay. Um, because it's, it's about learning how to use the, the tool that you have, that you're working with, you know, to make it kind of expressive, to make it, you know, so that you get comfortable with it enough that you can use it to kind of tell the story of what you're seeing. So, and here, you know, you saw where things were, you kind of saw the general proportion of things, but yeah. you, didn't spend a lot of time concentrating on, okay, what kind of line does that really need to be? Okay. Yeah. So, so again, you know, I want you to kind of slow down. Okay. And don't worry about finishing things so much, you know, because I, I would rather you, I would rather you get good at being able to make a variety of lines and have kind of a wider range of being able to express things that have a lot of finished drawings right now, okay? Because you're not always gonna be drawing in a class. You're not always gonna have a time limit, right? Right. And like in this particular case, so you had 30 minutes, right? To draw all this face. Well, okay. So you didn't have to rush, see? And here, Okay, you know, you got a little more variety. You've got some edges that you, you know, come pretty close to losing, you know, right along the edge here. Yeah. From where you kind of defined them. Right? But again, it's, it's like the more you work with that tool and you get it to, so that you can control it and vary yeah. it, both in value as far, you know, and, well, yeah, value and width and texture and how light and how dark it is you know, or how hard and how soft it is um the more expressive your drawings can become right okay okay you know um and just a perfect example of this and again you know i'm not i'm not trying to pick on you or anything like that but like with the eyes okay we've talked about eyes many times now and you know, the eye has to feel like it's sitting on a round ball, right? And the only way that you could get that to happen is, and I'm going to blow this up pretty big. So, okay. The only way that you're really going to get this eye, you know, like this one right here, to feel like it's sitting on a round ball is that the line can't be the same here, here, and here. Ah, there we go. Okay. 
they they have to they have to change, right? Because on okay. some part of that round form, if you think about it like an egg or a ball or something like that, you know, you might have a darker, kind of thicker line somewhere where there's a shadow. But as it comes up here and it comes around the rounded part of that eye and it begins to catch light up here on this top eyelid, well, that might go to a very thin line or it might even like disappear, right? Okay. And then you might pick it up over here with something that's not as thick and as dark as over here. See? So it's going to have a variety as it moves around that form. Okay. Uh, on the underside, on the eyelid here, mm -hmm. see? Because all of that is casting a shadow, you know, on the actual eyeball itself. Right. Again, you know, it may be thicker, right? But that doesn't mean that it's going to be as dark here as it is maybe here. Okay. You know, or maybe it's not as dark, you know, maybe there's, you can see a shadow, but the shadow is not that dark. In that area. And so again, you know, the value and or the line weight and, uh, you know, just the, the character of it is going to change as it moves around that form, okay? And then the same thing goes, you know, for the bottom. Right. You know, and everything else. <laughs> on this. Okay. okay. So, you know, and I, you know, again, it's to make you, make you kind of just slow down and think about that a little bit so that you can be conscious of it and make more variety that will describe the thing you're looking at. Okay. And at first, uh, you know, it may not be the fastest way of doing it, right? Because it's a lot to look at and a lot to kind of intellectually kind of think through in your head. Right. And then try to translate it to paper. But if you'll slow down and you'll start doing that, what you'll find is that when you speed up, it will stick with you and you'll begin to see things, recognize them, and you'll have more facility with your hand. Mm -hmm. Get it down more quickly. Okay. Okay. Yeah, it's practice, practice, and more practice. <laughs> yeah, that's what it all comes down to. Yeah. Yeah, and that's anything, you know, in art. So. Okay, so we've done everybody who's here. Okay. So let's let's talk badly about the people who aren't. Okay. Oh no! But they're not here to hear it. I know. But they can go back and watch the Zoom recording. Oh yeah, that's. See, it's true, All right? So let's talk about Rebecca. Okay, who I talked to this morning, who I thought was going to be here. Okay. And so this is uh, from two weeks ago. And. Okay, so the proportions and things in, in her figures are getting better. Um, you know, it's not, it's not correct here uh, yet, but it's closer than what she used to get to. Uh, you know, she's still struggling with laying down tones, just like other people I've talked to <laughs> today. Um, you know, but again, <laughs> You know, she's kind of struggling with trying to get all that stuff to work all at one time. You know, and it is. It's coming together, you know, a little at a time. And, uh, you know, it's, it's just a matter of slowing down and being more aware you know, as you do this. Um, you know, she sent this in. This is a, a hanging bird feeder that she's got outside for the hummingbirds uh, outside of her window. And, you know, it's a, it's a nice little drawing. But uh, again, you know, she's drawing these cylindrical objects and she's not thinking about, okay, what the light and, and is doing on the form. So again, you know, she's kind of treating this, you know, and it's, a, it's a wire, right? And she's trying to draw both sides of it, but the, the wire has got a rounded surface on it, so it can't be the same on both sides. So, 
And so, uh, you know, finding a little more variety, you know, in the line work would be helpful. Okay. Here's one of her figures from uh, two weeks ago again. And <clears throat> so, you know, like here with the arm and the hand, right? All right, so she's come back and she's laid some tone in here and she's made, you know, it's like the arm was turning and it was going into the shadow and she kept it, you know, really pretty soft and that was a good observation, right? On the back side of it, the left, I can't find my cursor here. Where did it go? I don't see it. Oh, it's somewhere down there. Okay, well, anyway, <clears throat> on the left side of the orb, you know, she put down a very, you know, distinct line. Okay. And so she's got some variation there between the two. Um, you know, it could vary more as it moved up and down, you know, the arm, or it could be overall maybe not as strong, you know, or the shadow side could be darker or stronger, because in fact, value-wise, that line is much darker than the tone she's got there. And that's supposed to be in the light. So, so again, you know, learning how to, you know, vary not only whether the line is sharp or soft, but also how dark or how light the line is. Again, the more variety you can get in it, the better. Uh, this is one of her longer drawings. Okay. And, you know, she's got, you know, she's beginning to get the hang of laying down values and, and blending and softening them back. Uh, the thing that could have made this better though, again, is right here along the front of the face, okay? You could have a very sharp, defined outline along that, that's fine, but when you come back and the backside of the neck is the exact same and the ear is the exact same as, as the outline of the face, again, it flattens out the drawing. So looking for more variety, that would describe what she's seeing, you know, actually there, whether, whether that edge is in light or the edge is in shadow, you know, would be kind of an important thing. You know, here are some of her gesture drawings, right? And again, mm, you know, you're kind of struggling with the proportion there, you know, because it's only a one minute drawing. Um, and, you know, the variety in the line has kind of gone out the window. And, uh, and so it's just a matter of slowing down, maybe not drawing as much, you know. Now she did these, and these are, are little like fabric studies. And I'm not exactly sure what she's doing them for, um, but you know, she's doing patterns and things on fabric. And, uh, you know, these are actually, you know, really kind of fun, nice little drawing. I'd like to see, you know, how she's going to end up using them. She did another one, you know, which is really, I think, you know, a really lovely study of like a knit sweater. And, you know, I guess, do they call that cabling? Yes. She, okay. she, she did cables and a rib uh -huh. okay. around the um, turtleneck collar is a rib okay and she moved into the, the cables you know it's to me as a knitter it's a great depiction mm -hmm. yeah i mean it's you know it's actually a pretty nice illustration yeah you know you know as kind of like a technical drawing yeah and the funny thing in technical drawings they're better If you can draw naturally, you know, um, and you're aware of value and, and stuff like that. Reality, though, is that if you looked at that sweater in front of you and you did vary the lines, a lot of those lines might almost disappear. 
because of the light on it. Yeah. Um, depending on how light or dark the sweater was. And so, you know, this becomes kind of almost like a technical drawing where, you know, you, you outline it, you know, based on the shape or the pattern a little bit more. So, um, and then... Yeah. She, the the skirt that she did with the with the polka dots uh -huh. there were some of them if you're using the folds then the polka dots like number one to me right it's a little you know, more it's, uh, yeah because right. the other ones it seems like the the polka dots are on top of the fold it, yeah they yeah they're not polka dots anymore they're like little balls that are yes. to the outside of the skirt yeah yeah <laughs> I know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's kind of the question. Are are they actually like printed on the fabric? Which or are, or which, are they pom poms? Right. Yeah. Which which number one looks like polka dots that are printed on the fabric and right. she pulled that off pretty well, you know. Uh, over here and then and she does say you know uh, artists make skirts look like it has pom poms attached instead. Yeah. Yeah. When you break that line. And yeah. Stuff. And then, of course, when you shade it, and then you shade the pom poms, then they really do become three-dimensional objects sitting on right. top of the fabric rather than a pattern on it. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. And uh, and this is her uh, when she was out painting plain air. Uh, this last Thursday, we were down at the river. Oh, at the rocks. Right. Yeah. So she painted her rocks, and she's got the river behind it, and then the green, you know further up part of that might be some of the trees here but mainly it's it's the color for the trees that are across the river on the other right. side. oh okay yeah and so she mixed this a couple of different times you know to, to try to get the color muted enough you know mm -hmm. and sit back which it does you know i mean this green is the thing that seems to move furthest back you know, in the composition. And then the water definitely comes forward because it's it's a light value, but it's still fairly intense color. And in fact, it's more intense than anything here on the tree trunks. Uh, and so it's almost like the blue wants to move forward and the tree trunks want to sink into it. Yeah. Uh, and she could have solved that with a wider range of value and or more intensity in the color that she was mixing, you know, for the trees themselves. So, you know, so she's still trying to work out, you know, how to, how to sort of push in full space with mixing color, you know, but, you know, she's getting there and this was her, I think it was only her second time doing plain air. It's really only her first time, like, since we've been going back out. Uh, again, she had tried it years ago. Oh, is this acrylic paint? Yeah, yeah. I'm okay. pretty sure that, yeah, she was using, yeah. now she, she brought her own acrylics. Okay. She didn't use the ones that I brought. Um, you know, but hey, you know, they work just fine. Yeah. I would have been glad to give her, you know, more acrylic paint <laughs> if she wanted. <laughs> you know. Because I think I had a no, well, she had more tubes of paint. I just I just had a lot more paint, you know. Yeah. Fine one. And for those of you who did not go out with us, this is kind of what it looks like. You know, the water was a little high when I got there in the morning. <laughs> you know, the they had the gates open, you know, to the dam, and so uh, the river was quite high. But, oh, I didn't realize it had come up like that. Wow. Oh, yeah. No, it was, it was, it, well, if you look at the first one, you know, where you, where you guys were sitting and painting, yeah. that was all underwater. Yeah. You know, <laughs> say an hour before you got there. That's what it looked like. Yeah, it was like all underwater. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. It was, it was pretty incredible, you know. See how, how high, the, see, there's the rocks. Yeah. Painting. And see, they're underwater or surrounded by water. Right. And there's right here. See, Bob was standing like right up here. Oh, 
So yeah. in an hour, we, you know, I can see the dark and the contrast, the light, the dark, but yeah. in an hour, that's what it looked like. Yeah, it, it, yeah, the water had subsided and yeah. Yeah, and this, this is probably nine o'clock, you know, in the morning. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And a lot of you guys showed up, you know, maybe around about 10. Yeah. So, yeah, so it, it changed significantly. Um, you know, there's the dam with both uh, spill gates open, and uh, it's letting a lot of water out. <laughs> I mean, a lot of water. It goes, it goes up really fast. So, well, I guess they need it, right? Because we're yeah. we're providing them with, with a resource, a natural resource. Yeah, yeah. Well, I mean, yeah, all, yeah. You got to let the water out down, you know, to go downstream. Um, you know, those lakes and reservoirs will only hold so much water. And we had had pretty significant rainfall, you oh, know, okay. uh, the week before. And so that's why it's kind of getting down to this area right now, you know, and really filling those lakes. So they, they've got to let the water out. They can't, you know, they can't just hold it in. It, it won't hold it, <laughs> you know, <laughs> too much water. Yeah, well, that's okay then. Yeah, better to let it out. Uh, a little at a time than yeah. have it overflow the dam. So, but uh, yeah, there's what it's, yeah. See, now it's gone way down from where it had been. So it's fairly significant, which was good. You know? It's good we did that. So. Um, John sent these in. Now he, you know, and these are from Friday. And rather than drawing, uh, you know, he'd made a pencil sketch and then he put watercolor over it, you know, for the, the two faces. And that's what he kind of concentrated on. And uh, that was my painting that I did, you know, the demo that a lot of you watched me um, at least, you know, kind of begin. And so that's kind of how it turned out. You know. Really nice. Yeah, not too bad for you know. I mean, I probably painted on a little too long, but you think so? Yeah, I do. You know, I probably should have stopped. You know, somewhere around maybe twelve thirty or so. You know. Oh, okay. Well, not I like it. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I I went ahead and took it to completion, but uh, you know, by by then the light had completely changed. And yeah. I was I was trying not to chase it, but you know I'm not you know I'm not absolutely confident that a lot of the color up here in these leaves, you know, need to be as light as that. They probably all need to be overall darker, you know, to get more of that sense of of what the light was doing in the morning. So, and uh, this is my my drawing from Friday. Now, what I did with the long drawing is I drew the whole figure and then I drew the face within the 30 minutes. You know, so I was trying to get both on there. And uh, yeah. I was a little happier with that one. So. And then these, these are the 10 minute figures. And again, you know, I'm, I'm, I didn't go for trying to finish them um in any way i was just you know trying to get the movement and the proportions and things so uh these are the gestures like the one minute drawing so. again you know just trying to get them to move and not be static feeling and some of them worked out okay some of them yeah not quite so much um, Barbara Green, who is in the class. Oh, okay. I have a, oh, okay. I'm going to have to fight with a, a, a lizard here. He's running up and down the, the uh, rail here, and he's kind of puffing out his neck with the big red sack on it, you know, at me. So I'm evidently in his territory. Oh, well. Is he uh, green or black? He's green. He's an anole. Oh, well, they, call, they call them chameleons here, but 
they're actually, you know, the technical name is they're an anole. So, but yeah, it's obviously a male and he's being very territorial about it. So it's fine. I'm bigger than he is. So I didn't realize that he paid, paid you to stay there. He paid me to stay there? Yeah. He, he, yeah, he paid you to stay on your, on your, on your patio. Oh, okay. Well, he's not paying me. He's, he's threatening me. It's yeah. like, hey, this is, this is my place. Why, why are you out here? So, yeah, he's, he's wanting to fight with me about it. <laughs> so I'm going to wrap up the class so that I don't have to take on an anole today. You know? Right. Yeah, I feel bad. But, uh, yeah, so the, these are Barbara's drawings. And she, you know, she's actually in the class. Like I said, you know, it's got a nice feel to it, you know, this particular drawing. So, um, let's see, who else? Well, that's kind of about it. You know, that's everybody. So. So now Thursday we're going to Cascade, is that right? I believe so, yes. I, I'm, okay. I'm pretty sure that's. I think, I think that's. That's what I read. I just don't want to go to the wrong place because that yeah. could set you out a little time to get to the other side. You could. It's a little out of the way. Um, I'll, I'll check and I'll send out an email to everybody so okay. that we, we're all on the same page All as, right. as to where we're going and what we're doing. Okay. Thank you for the reminder. And I have another question. Okay. Someone gave me linen now. Okay. Is it linen? that I can paint on or linen that you can't paint on? Is there a difference? Well, there, <clears throat> well, just like cotton, there's different weights, okay? Okay. Now, I guess my question to you is how, how thin and how stretchy and flexible is this linen? Well, I don't know, but I think when I come Thursday, I'm gonna throw it in my car. Okay, do that. Yeah, I'll take a look at it and uh, yeah, yeah. That way, I have a better answer. Yeah, and I, you know, I might even have something that I can uh, offer you if you do want to paint on it. I have some uh, clear gesso, so that you can put gesso and and seal it, right. and then okay. and then uh, when you paint on it the color of the linen will show through. So you can do what we call a vignette. Mm -hmm. Okay, so you bring it and we'll talk about that. And, you know, All right, I mean, I'll have canvas too, but I just wanted to make sure, mm -hmm. you know, should I make a dress or should I paint? You know, my goal is to paint, so. <laughs> so so what, what, color is, what color is the linen? It's natural, it's a natural colored linen. Okay, so it's kind of what we call ecru. Right, it's kind of this yes. beigey sort of brown. Yes. Okay. Yes. Okay. Good. That's how linen should look. <laughs> if you're right. Gonna... Well, I agree with you, but you know, when um, she says, "Oh, you could have this whole bolt," I was like, "Oh, okay, thanks." And then I realized, "Oh, maybe I could paint on this," but let me not tell her that. <laughs> right. Yeah. Well, you know, and I mean, linen is, you know, depending on the weight of it is nice stuff to make clothing out of but it's also very nice to paint on so right you and, know, I, mm -hmm. and the thing is with linen you can stretch it but a lot of times um you know people will mount it to a panel and so you get that harder surface that doesn't expand and contract as much plus you get the the tooth and the texture of the linen which you know takes paint really nicely yeah, I'm a, I'm excited, you know. <laughs> All right, well, I'll bring I'll bring a panel with me and and uh, you know when you come, bring a pair of scissors, okay, so that we can cut a little okay. bit off of the bolt or something, and okay. maybe maybe I'll show you guys how to mount it to a panel. You know. Oh, that, that would be awesome. Okay. Yeah, with that clear gesso, and and that way, when you want to make panels at home, you know how to do it. Okay. 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 All right. Well, on that happy note, let's see, how did we do time-wise? Well, it's 3.05. Okay.
It's okay. Yeah, we're escaping a little early, but hey, we covered, you know, we covered everything that was there. Yeah, we did. All right. So anyway, thank you all for coming. Okay, enjoy the rest of the afternoon. As you can tell, it got bright and sunny where I'm at. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I'm, not, I'm out thank here you. in the spotlight. <laughs> That's because, of, you know, Mr. Gecko came. Well, yeah. He's probably telling me to get off his porch. It's, it's, <laughs> he's trying to work on his tan. Anyway. Yeah. So thank you all for coming, and uh, we will see you, well, tomorrow is Wednesday, right? Yes. Okay. And so I will see you in the morning, okay? Okay. We'll talk about We're going to tell Armando goodbye, too. He just left us with his house. Well, I mean, you know, he's off working on a sandwich or something. I don't know. So. Yeah, I hear you. Okay. All right. All right. Take bye, care, all. everyone. Thank bye. you.